Welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Irit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria and Europe. And on my channel, I share my artsy adventures. Today, I want to give you a little palette update because I've been using this palette a lot and I just made some changes to it. So I thought it would be just like fun to talk about it because... We love talking about <laughs> pigments and well paints i don't go really into pigments uh, in this video but i think it's always fun to see uh, different people's palettes and why they choose certain colors and sometimes i discover uh, new colors that i also want to try and add to my palette so i hope you will enjoy this video in the first part i'm just uh, swatching for you and for myself my new palette and trying to do some mixes and figure out which colors um you know create which kinds of mixtures this is always something i love to do i will leave below timestamps so you can like jump ahead but it's mostly palette talk <laughs> that's the video today <laughs> and i will also leave all of the supplies that i'm using except the brush um this is a really 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 cheap brush that i don't it doesn't have a name on it i've had it for ages um i just because it is such a cheap little brush uh, I feel very comfortable abusing it and I do feel that I am abusing it a little bit within like just smooshing it into my paints there. Uh, but I also feel like this has been quite enjoyable for me and I've become less precious with it and with just like painting in... Um, a sketchbook and also it works well for me because it's very very small um, and it works well for the pens in this palette which are rather small and also it allows me to pick up a lot of pigment which I have found works really well for me with a with gouache paints uh, this is a watercolor and gouache palette and b with these kinds of sketchbooks, actually in general, um, I've just been enjoying a more intense application of color and that works well for gouache and that works well for sketchbooks that are not necessarily created for watercolor, so they don't really have watercolor paper. The sketchbook that I'm using is the Pith um, Karakara sketchbook which I absolutely love. You can find these on Jackson's. I don't know if they already have this size. This is a relatively new size. And for me, it's perfect for an everyday sketchbook. Uh, but I'm sure that they will get them soon because I know you can find the sketchbooks uh, on Jackson and they do go on sale for a second. And can we all enjoy what the watercolors are doing there it's a competition they are pushing each other i just love it watercolors are magical um so this is today's video uh, can we all just appreciate <laughs> this is mostly core core paints doing their thing i still owe you a mixing uh video but as you can see i'm just enjoying <laughs> mixing paint on my sketchbook and seeing what happens that always that's like whatever I'm doing whatever I'm into um, I'm always enjoying this yeah I could do this for hours <laughs> this is indigo we'll talk about that anyway uh, enjoy this palette chat let me know in the comments what you're into right now which colors are floating your boat give you all the feels and what palette you're using i would love to know and also the other people uh here reading the comments would like to know so let's get talking i hope you enjoyed that i want to just uh, share some thoughts about the changes that i made and uh, i think that every palette should be a work in progress and constantly changing and you know if you look at your palette and there are colors that you never use then it's time to let them live their best lives somewhere else and maybe introduce some other colors to your palette 
So I didn't change a lot, but I will tell you what I did change. So this actually stayed exactly the same. Um, I feel like this column really gives my palette uh, a lot more versatility and um, the combination of watercolor and gouache really, really works well for my current style and process. I don't work in a lot of layers and um, sometimes it's just challenging with watercolors to create interest and depth. Uh, and I feel like adding some opaque colors, some muted colors, really adds uh, versatility and even though it can like muddy your colors, I feel it is sometimes a wonderful addition. Um, and I think there is something in that opacity that adds some substance and more depth to a sketch. Um, in comparison with just using water to lighten your watercolors. That's been my experience. And I also feel that like in general, uh, especially when I'm working in sketchbooks that are meant for like mixed media and not uh, specifically for watercolor, um, I feel like it's really key to use less water uh, and then you need, like, you can't work just with these, like, super, super um, saturated, intense colors. But you really need some lighter colors to add um, that lighter value uh, and highlights to your painting. So here I have just, like, white. I have buff titanium. This is gouache. And this is... Schmincke Naples Yellow. It's watercolor, but it is very, very opaque and lovely. And I think also some my problem with some of the watercolors um, is that used very like applied heavily uh, in sketchbooks, they sometimes stay quite gooey. And I did have some pages like ripped here. Uh, because like here because they have like this um, kind of binder tacky gooey um, feel to them when they're not diluted enough and it shouldn't be like that I think it's you know particularly with like those super granulating watercolors that tend to have like a lot of binder in them um, I feel that can be an issue with them so um, so gouache again works better with these techniques of like using less water and applying the paint more heavily and uh, I was starting to say about the Schmincke Naples yellow that even though it's a watercolor it's it it like dries completely completely uh, flat and it doesn't have that like sticky residue that a few of the other colors can have. Ideally, they shouldn't, but some of them absolutely do. And I've seen this in across brands. So I don't think it's like a specific brand thing, but rather a specific, um, but rather um, characteristic of watercolors in certain uh, formulas with certain pigments that can be problematic uh, if used this way. So just wanted to say that. This is uh, Winsor & Newton Light Rose. This is gouache. Um, I really like this color, but it's kind of new to me, so I still haven't become super like confident and comfortable with it. Maybe I should dedicate a page uh, and see how it mixes with the other colors. This is, I love this color, this is um, Lucas Naples Yellow Red, it's watercolor. I love it and I really haven't been able to replace it. I find it to be quite unique. Uh, then I had a smaller pan and I made it bigger because I was going through a lot of this color. This is Core Quinacridone Gold. 
zoom in a little bit. So I use this color a lot and it's great in mixtures like you probably saw in my uh, recent video. Then I have this yellow. I think this is the Daniel Smith Hansa yellow medium, I want to say. Uh, this is just like a very, very basic yellow. I decided to go with gouache again so that uh, it would work nicely uh, when heavily applied. Then I have here also, this is gouache, this is lemon yellow, I want to say from Holbein. You can see it here. And then I have a color which I'm a little bit... Um, I'm not completely sure, like I enjoy using it. This is Windsor & Newton Gold Ochre or raw sienna. They're very, very similar. <laughs> Probably should have made some sort of note. So this is Windsor Newton either, I think it's raw sienna. And it's really lovely, uh, but I feel like sometimes I kind of use it interchangeably with the Naples yellow red. So maybe I need to also do a bit of a deep dive into this color and see if if it gives me anything extra. It is gouache, this is watercolor, but yeah. And this one is Daniel Smith, I think it's Pyrrol Red. Um, I don't use it a ton because I just don't use a lot of red. But I did, I, I find it's nice to have sometimes for just like those pops of red. Uh, so I switched from, I had a large pan and I switched to this like mid-sized pan. Uh, then I decided to add the Nickel Azo Yellow to my palette. I added just like a little thing. I don't know if that's going to be enough, but uh, I love Nickel Azo Yellow, uh, but I do have like a lot of yellows here. So we'll see how that works. And then this is, I think, Olive Green in gouache um, and then I have this is opera red light from Paul Rubens uh, I really really like this neon color of course this is most probably uh, fugitive and you shouldn't use it in paintings um, unless you consider that it will fade in time, but in a sketchbook, I don't find that to be a problem. Now, here's an important switch for me. I had actually two pink gouaches in my palette just because I felt the kind of payoff and brightness and vibrance of them was better than my watercolor bright pinks. Um, and one of them performed well and the other one disappointed me, so I switched to a different, so I actually switched from a gouache, I think it was opera or like opera rose, um, one of those kinds of pinks, and uh, it really dried hard and it wasn't reactivating as well as all of the other colors. So I switched it for the Da Vinci Opus, uh, which is a watercolor, but it's very, very bright. Uh, so I'm happy about that. That was something that I noticed that was like one of the things I knew I had to fix in this palette because I kept going to my large watercolor palette uh, to use Opus. And so I put it in here instead of that other pink, which was lovely, but was just like too weak and wasn't um, re-wetting properly. And then next to it, I stayed with gouache and I think I went with Rose Tyron, something like that from Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton have like a weirdly extensive range of pink gouache, which they don't have at all in their watercolor. It's really weird, um, but they have a lot of great pinks. They're very, very similar. Let me show you actually. This is, a few of these are Holbein. So these are Holbein. Uh, which I really like. This is the Holbein Opera and Holbein Rose. But then Windsor & Newton have like four super bright pinks. So they have the Opera Rose, which is very similar to 
like a lot of them are just very similar. <laughs> they have Bengal Rose, which I would say is a tad less vibrant. They have Opera Pink, which is quite similar to Holbein's Opera. Uh, they have Rose Tyran, I'm going to call it. I think that's the one I picked for my palette. And then they have the Magenta, uh, which is, again, like slightly more muted, but it's still quite bright. So, like, I probably, I think my favorites from these would probably be the Holbein ones, but I feel like the Holbein ones are just a little bit more crumbly, so I actually prefer the formula of Winsor & Newton uh, a bit more than Holbein if you're not using your gouache freshly squeezed. If you're using them freshly squeezed, then you can go with either one, but if you want to put them in a palette, I feel like the Holbein... Um, just crumble a bit faster than the Winsor & Newton. And then the Daniel Smith one are my favorite formula, uh, but they don't have the color range to compete with the with those other two. Anyway, um, oh, I'm getting so messy. That's a bit of a problem with this palette, uh, that it is very messy. Um, and for me, I have to kind of use a small brush with it or it just really gets kind of all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna resist the urge to fuss. Uh, then I have Cobalt Violet here, uh, which stayed. I have Artemis here, which I love. So it was very easy for me to see that I actually like used all of these um, and kept them. And then here I added the Cascade Green Gouache from Daniel Smith. Uh, I just, I felt like I needed a little, like I really like that color and we'll see if I use it. And then this one is the Pale Patina from Holbein. Uh, it's just a really pretty color. I don't know if I'll use it, but I kind of, I had the space, so I thought I would add it. Uh, Cobalt Turquoise from Lucas, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know, I have to think, or did I use gouache? Wow. I really can't remember what I used here. Maybe I filmed it somewhere. It could be gouache. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, it's like a cobalt teal kind of color that I really, really love. Uh, then I have ultramarine turquoise, which I'm really surprised to see that I have used more than I expected. I think, um, again, like having some colors that are very, very dark, very intense, and then some that are like very, very light, it just makes the palette more effective when you're working fast in few layers. Like you want to get that intensity from the get-go and not have to go back and add more layers. Um, that's my experience so far. Uh, indigo from Schminke. There are a lot of indigos out there in watercolor and gouache and you know acrylic and everything. The watercolor version of Indigo by Schminke is my absolute favorite. I think it's slightly different than other versions. I think it's more beautiful. It's like deeper. It resembles in Danthron blue, if you're familiar with that kind of blue, um, in that kind of inky deep blue color. Whereas most brands Indigo has a little bit of that like black muted dark blue color. So my go-to is the Schminke Indigo. And then this is, I think, Daniel Smith Ultramarine Gouache. This is definitely gouache. I wanted that and I feel like it's a great choice for me to have uh, ultramarine blue as gouache as opposed to watercolor. Um, again, I just feel it gives me better intensity uh, in this setting of a sketchbook. And then here, this one is, I think it's a cobalt blue hue. No, it's smalt blue from Holbein. I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> and then these two, I decided to make them share uh, a pan just because I think I ran out of like the tiny ones. So these are both Daniel Smith. This one is Wisteria. This one is Lavender. I use these a lot. They're beautiful. They just the uh, the daniel smith gouache formulation is beautiful and 
I definitely am going to pick up some more when I'm going now to the States because they are much cheaper in the States than they are here in Europe. So I'm going to really uh, enjoy all of the Daniel Smith products that I can get my hands on. Uh, and yeah, and this one, the I try to kind of still fit this mixing uh, thing because I do find it handy. Um, but yeah, of course I could just like take it out and then have more space for more colors. We'll see as I work and play with this one. Um, it's really have been like my go-to instead of kind of opening my larger watercolor palette. Uh, it's just so quick and nice to work with. So I've just been painting, I set it up for a trip and I've been using it all the time in my studio actually. So um, like actually next to my watercolor palette. So I don't know. Um, it could be that for me, this is like a good solution for gouache because my other gouache palette is this ginormous thing. And you can see, I haven't used it for a while and it's actually really, really dry. Uh, probably I should just like get rid of everything, like clean it out because it's so dry and not really workable uh, anymore. Like a lot of the paints, like, look at this. This is like, this is Holbein. Like it's just crumbling. Um, I think Holbein to me has the most like crumbly um, formula. So if you want to use gouache dry and re-wet it, I would probably avoid Holbein as much as possible. Uh, but if you're using it like freshly squeezed, then Holbein has like beautiful colors. But yeah, I think I have to like clean this palette out. But anyway, it's like really gigantic and bulky. And this one just makes the whole experience so fun and easy and quick. And because the pans are so flat, it really doesn't allow me to squeeze out so much paint. Uh, so I'm not like wasting a lot. Um, yeah, I, th I think I will also pick up a couple like one for sure, uh, another palette of this. Uh, and I'll probably just get the, um, like the mid-size pans. Like these ones, I have like a bunch of them, so I don't need any more like the large ones. But I think maybe for me, they're a little bit too large. Uh, and I think this is these, these ones are very small and sometimes it's kind of annoying to like dip your brush in them for me. Uh, but this is like the perfect size, like these elongate, elongated ones. Uh, so I think I'll just stick to those, but we'll get myself another palette and maybe do just like a gouache uh, palette. Really just loving, loving, loving this. For me, the, the best sign of a good product and a good palette and a good color selection is if you use it and if you like want to use it and you get like, you know, kind of obsessed with <laughs> with it and just like painting with it. It doesn't have to be that you're sitting around painting masterpieces all day. Just the fact that you feel inspired to create. So uh, this is the palette update. And um, yeah, I hope this, you know, inspires you to set up your own. I'm not affiliated with this brand, although I wish I were. Uh, they're just such an amazing product and I think every one of you also that have that has them has like written me and left me comments that you love yours uh, and I completely understand and I think especially now that they came up with this size the original the original one which I was gifted and I also loved it and you can still like fit a lot in it is this size so it's kind of half but once they came with this palette, I really feel like you can have a full palette with, it's not light because it's all metal, but it's, you know, super, super compact. And just, again, it's just like fun to handle. Um, so yeah, that's my palette update. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in another video soon.